Um, yeah, so that got kind of cut off. Okay, so we finished that. So the next thing I'm going to do basically is I'm going to create a new clip, and this one is going to be to going to be Louise Jump. All right, and save. Bam. All right, and I'm just going to add a property, and it is going to be a sprite. All right, no seven up here, and we are going to add. Uh, I'm going to select this and we are just I only have one image for it cuz I'm cool like that. I'm just going to go ahead and delete this one so it's just this one picture and that's my jump. Okay? And we can turn off record and I'm switch to Louise Idol, which should be the default um and we'll just turn this back off. And if I hit play, nothing should happen because I don't have the animations playing. Okay? So it's just is V1. Um but uh it's sort of set up that way. All right? Um, let me see. Do I need anything else on this? I can't remember. I think that was good. Uh, we might need more. I'm not sure. So I'm going to go back to my projects, go to prefabs. I'm going to take, uh, Louise and I'm going to drop it into prefabs. So she's right there. And then whenever I need it, I can pop it back out. Now, the next thing is the last sprite to handle is the dragon. Um, so uh, I'm going to open this up and he only has two frames and all he's ever going to do is walk. He never stops or anything. Um, I, I was going to do it this way with the other one, but I'm going to do it with, I'm going to do it this way for this one. I'm going to select both of these and I'm just going to drop them up here and you're going to see it's going to automatically go, automatically go animation. It's automatically going to take those two things and make an animation out of it. Okay. So I'm going to go right to assets, animations, and this one's just going to, I'm just going to call it dragon because it's all it does and hit save. Okay. And now you'll see dragon. Um, and I am going to go. Bah, 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 bah. where are you to the sorting layer and that's going to be foreground we're going to leave it at zero and if i hit play um you will see it move but see how it's animating kind of quick it's not really how fast i want it to animate so don't mind that um that's just too much for me so what i'm going to do is uh i'm going to fix that so i'm going to go to the animator i'm going to select the animation here and you see where it says speed i can change it right here so i'm going to change the speed from one to not sure which way I want to go with this. Let's try point one. Let's see, does that make it slower? Okay, that was way too slow. All right, point one, so it was a tenth of the speed, but apparently that makes a huge difference. Let's do point two five. Enter. Let's see. That's good. Point two five works. Okay. Um, so I can just quickly make an animation that way. So you can actually do it that way as well. Um, I just decided to do this way because. The one made sense to do it this way, but since there's only one animation for him, it just makes sense. So um, I'm just showing you another way of doing it. Uh, I'm also going to go to my sprites here. And if you look, he's too large. I don't really want him that big. Uh, so I'm going to select this and it's a 250. Let's try 350 and apply. I can shrink them manually, but it's better to bring them in because these are the import settings that he'll automatically be that size. It's just a cleaner way of working. Um, okay, good. Now I'm just going to go ahead and add the other stuff like I did before. So I'm going to add component, uh, physics 2D, rigid body. And again, I'm going to go ahead and add that rotate Z constraint. And we're going to add another component, physics 2D. And I'll just do a box collider um, for uh, this one as well. And we will leave it like that for now. Yeah. Um, because we're actually going to do something a little bit different with him. But this will be fine for now. Um, I'm just going to leave it like that. Uh, and I'm going to go here. And I didn't... Okay, one of the things I, I didn't do on this... I'm going to go ahead and change this name to just Dragon so it's bigger. Um, on Player, I wanted to add a tag that says Player. So if somebody runs into it, the, um, you can mark things with this. And basically, it's, it's like grouping them in a sense. So it's like a, a way of kind of saying all these things are of type player. Um, but I could have like, I could grab all of these different background elements and make a tag for it and say all these are type background or all of these are of type pickup. Um, and it just lets you know what it is, um, which is good. And on the dragon, uh, I'm going to go ahead and add a tag, but I don't have one for it. I'm going to add a tag of enemy. So I'm going here. So I just hit add tag and then I'm going to do enemy. 
All right, and what's kind of crappy is it makes the tag, but it doesn't actually attach it. So you have to go back to it and attach it again. So I'm gonna go to prefabs and I'm going to drop this into here and I'm gonna make sure I hit apply because I don't know if I hit apply yet or not uh, on this. Okay, good. So that's all good. And I'm actually gonna get rid of the dragon for right now. And I'm gonna concentrate on, I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna concentrate on the, um, the character so that she moves. Cause right now she just does this. Fantastic. Uh, but I want to be able to actually move this character. Uh, that would be good. So um, to do that, I'm going to have to make a script. All right. So we're going to scripts, right click, and we're going to create uh, JavaScript. And it's going to be player controller underscore. Oh, I'm not sorry, underscore, just script. All right. So player controller script. I'm just going to double them a click on it, and it should bring up my script editor momentarily i'm gonna pause it while it does that all right so um i am going to go ahead and uh get this going um all right so uh what we're gonna do is i don't need a start function okay um which is fine i'm just gonna go ahead and add some variables that we're gonna use in order to um control our thing so i'm gonna do a private um, variable movement okay and it's going to be a float all right so basically this is the thing that's going to um, hold our input for the movement all right so it's, it's actually going to be from negative one to positive one um, good so float and then we're gonna do variable player speed and basically I'm making this in a sense public because it's it's I didn't write private in it uh, and this is also going to be a float. And basically the idea is that after I um, make the script, I can punch in different numbers in there. Like if my if I feel like my player is moving too fast, too slow, I can just quickly put a different number in that. And that will control. That's basically the multiplier for the movement. Um, then I'm going to do another variable. And it's going to be the jump key. This is going to be the key that you press in order to jump. So, um, and it's going to be of type key code key code all right so basically they're specific you know it's it's gonna it's gonna store the button that's jump um we're gonna do a variable um jump uh strength and this is basically gonna be the same thing as player speed but for jump uh so it's gonna control the strength of the jump so if i decide the character's jumping too uh fast or too strongly like too high i can lower this number we're gonna do another variable for jump rate and float and i'm just going to automatically already set this up to um, 0 0.5 uh, and basically what this is going to do is um it's gonna how often you can jump all right so for jump rate uh and then we're gonna do a private variable for next jump which this is when you can jump next um basically the idea is uh for like double jumping and we're gonna do a float and I'm going to set this to 0, 0.0 all right and lastly I'm going to do a variable to um, basically it's going to store the collision detection um, and basically what I need this for is I don't want to be able to jump unless I'm touching the ground so I'm gonna have a there's that collider that we placed on our character that allows it to collide well what it's also going to do is it's also going to tell us whether we're colliding with something and if we're colliding with something it's gonna allow us to jump so as long as we are colliding we can jump but if we're not colliding with something we're not gonna be able to jump um, because I can I don't want to be able to just randomly jump in the air right that makes sense um, good and then we only need that and I like to do this because I think it looks a little bit cleaner okay uh, so, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make movement, uh, and we're going to set that, we're going to assign it the value from our input dot get access, access, um, and the access we're going to get is the horizontal, and I'll give you, I'll explain what this is in a second. Okay. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to store the input of get access, that's the horizontal one, into movement, all right? So, just so you get an idea of what that means exactly, I'm actually going to take private off of this so you can kind of tell. Um, we're going to, and I'm going to save this, um, and I'm going to minimize it. And let me just make sure there's no errors. I'm going to take this, and I'm going to go ahead and throw it on the player. 
So basically what it's saying is this, it's going to take input.get access. So if you remember, you can go to edit project settings, play, you don't have to do this. I'm just showing you. Um, oh, I'm sorry, not that one. Edit uh, project settings and it's input. So there's different axes, and basically these axes are the controls, like the, the numbers and the whatever, and you can set these up. Um, and so there's a horizontal and vertical one. And basically the way it works is that horizontal uh, is your left and right, and vertical is your up and down, okay? Now the reason why this is better than strictly saying, um, you know, press this key, is that if I made it like left arrow key, it would only ever work with the left arrow key. By having this horizontal access, I can set it so that it is left and right, but it also can do an alternative one, which would be A, S, and D, you know, um, which we normally see for, um, for uh, sometimes people work with that as opposed to the number or the, uh, the arrow keys here. And also it's set up to um, a mouse or an X axis if you're using um, a joystick. Okay, so it'll work with all of these things. So depending on what you're using, I don't have to make a special control for each one of those. Be like, if they press this or this or this, I just say if if, if they engage this horizontal um, axis, you know, t store that information into this, whatever they're using. Okay, so that's where this comes from. And just so you get an idea, uh, it's going to store the information. So if I hit play, uh, if you look down here, if I push left, see how it goes to minus one. And you can see how it, it varies and then it goes this and goes positive one. So it's taking that number and it's storing in there. So if it's positive one, it's going to move to the right. And if it's negative one, it's going to move to the left. Okay. And that's basically what that part is doing. Uh, oh, well, all that's doing right now is just storing that number in there. We're going to use that. We're going to multiply it times the speed in order to say go left or go right. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to say take that and it's on function update because um, update uh, operates every uh, frame, every visual frame. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do if the input, oops, it's capital input dot get key. Um, and in this case, it's going to be the jump key, which, uh, I have to set. I haven't set that yet. If the, if they press the jump key press basically, um, and the, uh, time dot time it's greater than the next let's do like this next jump so basically if both these items are true so if they push the jump key and um the next jump which is how we're going to store it starts out at zero because this is like the timer to it um and every jump is every 0.5 seconds or whatever um so basically if if it's if it's if it's if the next if it's allowed to jump like if it's the rate is less than that and also that um, the buttons press this is going to go ahead and basically yeah um, oops wrong one it's gonna allow this to happen okay so uh, it's gonna allow us to jump what the heck is going on there we go all right I always like to put my brackets in first it's gonna operate this bit of code here um ba -ba -da -ba. oh actually before we even do that uh if input key yeah so then it's going to be oops i'm sorry that does go there it goes here um it's going to be um next jump we're going to uh reset that value to time dot time so it's basically we're saying the current time and it's going to be plus the jump rate okay so jump rate. All right. Basically, we're saying here is that if this gets pushed, what it's going to do is it's going to set up what the next jump time is. And so basically, it's going to be the current time plus the jump rate. So basically, let's say it's three minutes. It's going to be three minutes plus the jump rate, which is uh, half a minute or half a second. I got to switch that. Um, so that times uh, plus that rate. So it'll be that. Basically, we're setting a time in the future where that jumping is allowed again. That's basically what this bit is saying. Um, and it's just setting what that would be. It's not saying that it's just setting what the next point one is. Okay, so next is going to be if. Um, so basically, it's, first it's going to do that. It's going to say, okay, if they hit jump and it's, the jump is currently allowed. Also, if basically, uh, we're going to say C-O-L-L -O -L detection. So if this is true. So basically, um, 
the collision detection, if it is colliding, if it's touching the ground, basically, that's what this is going to, we haven't set that up to do that yet, but that's what this is going to be. Um, then it's going to allow uh, that to happen. I'm going to pause it and do the next thing.